Human beings are searching for the personal experience of reality. reality. They are seeking to come to understand themselves, to find a reason for their own existence. And so you go round and round and round, ever chasing the illusion that there is something outside yourself, outside your here and now, to be attained that will make things better. No guru, no method, no teacher, and no nothing else either. Welcome, fellow phoenixes. As today's economic ecosystem continues to isolate and drive ideological wedges between us and our fellow man, we are in need of a solution. Unbeknownst to many, that solution rests in the less familiar psychedelic philosophy of a counterculture legend, Timothy Leary. This concept was dusted off decades later by the techno shaman, Terence McKenna, and decades later still, we will examine it again. Today, we will find the others. And I'm not going to get into any quotes today. Um, as far as what I'm grateful for, I'm grateful um, to have the ability to access this information and that these people existed and that this uh, concept was passed on. And with that, I'm going to get into a screen share. Um, if you're watching the video and if you're just listening um, to the podcast, you will just hear the audio. And this is a quote by Tim Leary. It's not being spoken by Tim Leary in this, but it is the quote that he said. Admit it. You aren't like them. You're not even close. You may occasionally dress yourself up as one of them, watch the same mindless television shows as they do, maybe even eat the same fast food sometimes. But it seems like the more you try to fit in, the more you feel like an outsider, watching the normal people as they go about their automatic existences. For every time you say club passwords like have a nice day and weather's awful today, eh? You yearn inside to say forbidden things like tell me something that makes you cry or what do you think deja vu is for? Face it, you even want to talk to that girl in the elevator. But what if that girl in the elevator and the balding man who walks past your cubicle at work are thinking the same thing? Who knows what you might learn from taking a chance on conversation with a stranger? Everyone carries a piece of the puzzle. Nobody comes into your life by mere coincidence. Trust your instincts. Do the unexpected. Find the others. Okay, so getting into that whole concept that's portrayed there, um, I'll put the link to the actual video um, within the uh, credits or whatever so people can check out the video and the channel that put that up. Um, I like that concept of it because it's like, a lot of us do feel different, but there's all these people around us that have all these other experiences. And maybe we don't connect on a lot of this stuff. Like maybe we don't watch the t same TV shows. Maybe we don't eat the same fast food they do. Um, maybe our lives are completely different. Maybe politically we're divided. Maybe we're like have all these different, anything different you can think of. It doesn't mean you still can't learn something from people. I like that element of how that quote is portrayed. Like every single person has something for us. And it kind of brings me to um, the book, The Celestine Prophecy, where it's really about getting out and exploring life and conversing with people and um, recognizing that people in your path will send you different directions. E even today, like where I'm at is largely because of conversations that I've had with people and exploring um, my own truths by hearing other truths that other people have had and like building my philosophy based upon shared experience with other people or taking a concept somebody else has given me much like this concept of find the others and um, putting my framework around it so it's like I can identify with it on a deeper level. So we've heard Timothy Leary's concept of it now I'm going to get into some of how Terrence McKenna took it when he brought it up, which is how I actually originally heard of this. So one second. You know, one of the things Tim Leary said in the 60s that I always remembered, but I never heard anybody talk about or ever really heard him quote. It was a great rallying cry. It was much better than turn on, tune in, drop out. And it was this, it was 
find the others. Find the others. And then you will know what to do. Well, now you can find the others. You don't have to stick a flower in your hair and go to San Francisco. Uh, you just uh, go to the web. Find the others. We all need to create affinity groups, which are subsets of the much larger community that we're part of. And then, using this technology, which was designed to keep track of us, to pick our pockets, and to sell us junk we don't want, use this technology to produce art, massive amounts of subversive art. And all art is subversive. I'm not calling for an ideological agenda. All truth which springs from the individual is subversive because, and this is a, a theme of mine that I'm getting more and more into the longer I live, culture is not your friend. All right. So I like really how Terrence takes that. I don't want to get too much into the culture not being your friend concept because I touched on that like very early on in this podcast. Episode five, I want to say, I had all these snippets of uh, Terrence McKenna talking about culture not being your friend. And in some ways I agree with him and in other ways I don't necessarily agree with him and, and that's fine. Um, what I like about what Terrence McKenna puts out there is how using the internet we can connect with groups of similar people. So Timothy Leary's concept was like just finding people and digesting lots of different experiences from anybody, at least in my understanding of it, how that quote was um, presented and how I received it. What I like what Terrence McKenna did, um, and he talks about it more on another clip that I couldn't find, but he's like, you can find groups of people that are just like you as well. He talks about like finding people that are in into witchcraft or something like that in Moose Jaw, Minnesota, or like all this other stuff in this other clip. And that's one of the great things about the internet. I also like about how he has this awareness of what the internet was created for originally, which was a good way to keep track of everybody. And there's a lot of information that supports that in my understanding. I haven't done the research because I'm more in tune with um, focusing on what benefits me and researching what the internet was intended for versus what we can use it for today is way different. And I like how Terrence points out that it's a great way to connect with other people of similar mindsets and how we can come together and create art um, and I also like how the fact that art is subversive. So if you view that there's elements within culture that you dislike, the common modality is to do all this other stuff to, um, to overcome it. But what Terrence is, is proposing is kind of like a, a psychedelic type approach to it create this art because art has a way of shifting consciousness and then distribute it. And this is kind of like a um, self gratifying example of that. But for me, like connecting with the artist that did the book cover for the book that I'm releasing tomorrow on my poetry book and like helping her, having her um, giving her the idea for what I want my cover to look like and letting her create it. And then me creating my poetry from a decade of my life and putting it in there, that is that find the others that Terrence is talking about. Her and I have co-created this piece of art, which is this book that I can share to people with people. And it should shift their consciousness in some way. If, if I did my job and if they're, if they're open-minded enough to let it shift their consciousness, even if it's just resonating with the suffering that I went through or the hope that I have in there, there's still going to be some kind of energetic connection. And again, it's going to be finding others. The other element of, of finding the others is with the internet, we can find others like us within our community. Um, one of the Facebook groups that I'm in, which is the positive head group, they talk a lot of, like, I've seen a lot of people talk about like trying to find connection with other people in the group. And when it comes down to it, a lot of people just want to find this group that they're comfortable in and just like instantly feel the connection 
And in my experience from everything I've been in and feeling largely isolated most of my life, you have to go to whatever you're into and make yourself included by continuing to get through your own discomfort and not leave it up to the other people to include you. If you want to be participating in life and participating in the groups that you want to and participating in the experiences you want to have, it's not a matter of getting invited or, or saying these people don't want me to participate. It's a matter of participating regardless. So maybe you're in Moose Jaw, wherever it is, Minnesota or Alaska or whatever, and maybe there isn't a, a, like a, a, a Wiccan group or w whatever Terrence said in the quote that I couldn't find. Maybe you create it and you wait long enough and people will start participating in it. Or maybe people that aren't necessarily into your same thing will come to it and you can glean something else from it. Like find people that support your passion, find people that fuel your fire and find people that can help you chip away some of your own barriers to your connection. But that all really starts with you and your own open-mindedness and your own exploration. I mean, for me, I'm very fortunate, like going into a 12 step program, like I started to find others that way. And it was interesting because um, one of the topics this week at one of the meetings I go to was connection with others. And it was like odd to sit there and think about it, how when I came in, I didn't feel a part of, I didn't feel a part of anything. I was like an outsider. Um, but by sitting there long enough, by listening to these other people long enough and by finding um, connection through various elements of our stories. And I don't identify with every element of everybody's story, but there's usually a part within everyone's story that I can identify with outside of the use of substances. Um, so it's just surreal to look at that, like looking back now coming up on 18 months clean and see how over time, like I didn't even recognize the shift of being apart from to being a part of, um, cause it can happen that quick. So like in closing to crystallize this idea of find the others, your tribe is everywhere and your tribe isn't of people that are exactly like you, your tribe and people that can send you on your path can be people that are absolutely opposite of you that are your ideological opposite that are people that would will even piss you off that's something else that i've learned on my own journey um within recovery specifically sometimes the people that piss me off the most are the people that have saved my life are the people that have given me the the most truth um that have told me the things nobody else would tell me because they didn't want to hurt my feelings one of the guys that goes to a meeting, one of the meetings I go to sometimes will say, I ain't worried about hurting your feelings. I'm trying to save your life. And what he means by that isn't necessarily he's going to go out of his way to insult people. What he means is I'd rather be real with you and tell you what I, what I see versus telling you what you want to hear. Um, and I think we need some of that, but we also need some of the people that are just like us, that get us, that agree with everything we say you need a wide mix and when you start limiting yourself and isolating yourself off like lots of people do now in this political climate um it can be really difficult i think i've really hit um this subject on the head as much as i want to my book is going to be released tomorrow um fingers crossed on my 34th birthday the book is vagrant verses and it'll be available on Amazon. I'll start putting links in the bottom of the podcast videos um, and also on the podcast audio. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can uh, make a donation. You can buy a tarot card reading. You can get some spiritual guidance from me. You can buy stuff in my store. Um, you can share this video. You can like this video or, or podcast. You can uh, leave reviews. There's all sorts of ways you can support what I'm doing that aren't monetarily um, involved e even so yeah um, with that love and light I appreciate love respect and appreciate all of you I have a couple interviews um, I'm going to be doing on other people's podcasts and I'm actually going to interview myself tomorrow for my birthday 
as kind of like a, uh, a switch up of things. So once again, I love, respect, and appreciate all of you. Love and light. Namaste. Thank you.